Hello, everyone, and welcome to our last series of How to Master Workplace Wellness like an Ergonomist. Um, we're going to be focusing on the whole body fit. My name is Caroline Nguyen with the U.S. Customer Marketing Team, and I'm here again with our Category Marketing Manager for Ergonomics, Lisa Skytabor. Here's what Lisa will cover for today. So we're going to be talking about latest trends in the workplace um, and with wellness and understanding where ergonomics as an industry stands globally. We're gonna be discussing pain points of sitting all day and evaluate the best sit-stand solutions for every environment. All right, that's it for me and here is Lisa. Thanks, Caroline. Today, I really wanna focus on that whole body fit. So we've talked about upper body uh, that was including the neck and the shoulders and those upper extremities like your wrist and your forearms. We talked about the lower body, so talking about that lower back specifically, your legs and your feet. But today I really wanna focus on that whole body and how it all works together and what are some of the products that we can do to encourage great behaviors, but then also form new habits at our workplace um, that really truly engage your core and then also encourage that total body movement. You'll probably hear me repeat that phrase repeatedly throughout the uh, webinar today, because it is so, so important to think about that total body movement. You wanna make sure that you do mix um, your sitting and standing throughout the working day. One of the most popular questions that I was asked when I was doing ergo assessments is how often do you sit? How often do you stand? How often do you go between the two? And you really wanna strive for 16 times a day. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to be two times every hour, but you wanna make sure that in order to feel the benefit in your body, your entire body needs to get into a different type of motion. So that can be accomplished by several different ways, um, several different equipment solutions. And one of the easiest tips that I can pass on to someone is it doesn't have to be uh, getting up and going for a mile walk or anything like that. It can be as simple as getting up out of your chair, standing up and then sitting back down to readjust yourself into the equipment solutions that you have at your desk already. And then we'll also talk about sit stand desks and. Um, how those can be incorporated into the workplace and what a lot of those benefits are. So if you wanna know why we're gonna be talking about that today, you can see this huge number on the screen right now of $4.2 trillion in global wellness that is thriving. Um, I always like to emphasize when it's trillion, it's not million, it's not billion, but $4.2 trillion in global wellness. Um, that does encompass all aspects of global wellness, but this research shows uh, that the market is growing at a historic rate nearly twice as fast as our global economy. That's huge. And so global wellness is actually representing over 5% of our entire global economic output. So what does that mean for you guys as partners? I wanna dive deeper into what that whole wellness spectrum looks like, but then also how much that's growing and what opportunities you guys have to attach solutions to sales that you might already have, as well as earn new customers in this space. So if we're looking at the entire wellness industry, um, you can see that there's certainly different aspects of it. The orange little dot, so just a small, small little piece of the pie is workplace wellness. Other aspects of it you might be more familiar with just depending on what your lifestyle incorporates but you have tourism, the spa, fitness, um, healthy eating, all of those things are becoming a vital part of daily decision-making. Whereas a few short years ago, it was certainly a luxury item or is something that only a select group of people worried about. Uh, but now today, workplace wellness is absolutely growing um, because it's something that every single person is starting to worry about on a daily basis because of all of the articles that are coming out, all of these awesome equipment solutions that are becoming so incredibly affordable for people. Um, but then also just the fact that our health is cer certainly starting to slip when we look at what our lifestyle actually is putting us through in the normal workday. So there's certainly room for growth in this area. Um, it is valued at almost $48 billion as is, which is still a really huge number, but workplace wellness certainly remains very small in comparison to the rest of the wellness industry. But with the trends that are out there with all of the different TAM that we've covered in the upper body, the lower body, and then we'll talk about some in the whole body as well today, there's certainly so much room for growth in this industry. It's so important to bring this to the forefront of solutions that you can introduce to your customers 
and really attach those to the other sales that are already going out. One of the areas too I really wanna look at is some of the trends that are there. Um, throughout the slides today, you will start seeing different environments. So it's not always just a traditional work setup. Uh, it could be a conference room, it could be a workstation, it could be a hot desking. And so I'll try to highlight some of those as we go through today. Um, but just understanding that workplace wellness isn't just at a, a standard workstation. So you can see with the trends that are here today, back in 2015, which was really not that long ago, the market size was at just over $44 billion. Um, until 2017, it was starting to grow at almost 5%. And if you look at the forecast going into 2022, it is projected to grow at 6.7%, bringing that market size up to $65.6 .6 billion. So some of those things to consider in those trends are that about 70% of employees are interested in being proactive about their health. So that goes to it's not just the elite or just a small group. It is truly every single individual that is starting to worry and bring those concerns to those decision makers in their company. Also something to consider is 66% of organizations are starting to be very concerned about controlling healthcare costs. We all know that healthcare premiums and injuries are on the rise, and we've talked about some of those statistics in the past webinars, but knowing that three out of five businesses now actually have a budget allocated specifically to wellness. And that's huge as we are uh, looking into these partnerships that we can make with these companies to bring these affordable ergonomic solutions in when they do already have typically some sort of budget allocated to making these improvements in the workspace. And so with this slide, um, looking at bringing our wellness solutions into a conference room or into collaboration spaces, those are really big buzzwords right now with the collaboration space. So having a um, docking station that actually elevates your, um, your tablet or your device up into a good position for yourself, or even having a presenter that allows you to have it fit well in your hand and making sure that you can have those devices available that really make your job easier and also more comfortable. So I wanna do a little bit of a breakdown and this could vary from person to person, but we took this survey uh, study that was done and basically looking at a 24 hour period um, normal day, the average person spends an amazing 21 hours sedentary and only about two hours active. And so if you look at that breakdown, I'd be curious to see where it goes for yourself. Um, but active sitting and standing is only about three hours total of that day. And then some people may spend longer eating. Some people may spend more time on their computer or watching TV. But some of the important things to look at are at the bottom where we're spending seven and a half hours typically sitting at work. And then we go home and we're on our computer or watching those TVs and just adding more and more sedentary lifestyle situations to our life. If you were to go into the doctor, have a checkup and try to figure out where our health stands, we all know that there's certainly improvements to our health that we could make. But if you go to the doctor and we're given the diagnosis of something that meant you just had a sedentary lifestyle, that's certainly something to be concerned about. And there is actually a medical diagnosis out there called sitting disease. And so knowing that a lot of you guys are getting up at every 20 to 30 minutes, that's great. Um, and even the three to four times a day, I get it that we get sucked into our work and we don't realize how much time has passed. But some stats to think about when we're passing these to our customers is that we wanna make sure we really are caring about our customer and also offering solutions that really make an impact on their life inside of work as well as outside of work. So only six and a half percent of Americans meet the minimal physical guideline requirement for work. And so if we think about that, that is such a small percentage that are actually meeting those guidelines. And then 20% of all deaths of people that are 35 or older are actually attributed to a lack of physical activity. And sometimes dietary habits are included in there as well, but that actually accounts to about 300,000 people a year that have something related to that lack of physical activity. We're starting to see this as a society and companies are certainly taking note and they want to make those changes for their employees. And then lastly, sedentary lifestyles are certainly responsible with the sitting disease. 
um, for an estimated $24 billion in that direct medical spending. We've talked a lot about direct and indirect cost in the past webinars when we're talking about carpal tunnel or that low back uh, issues that might come up. And so that $24 billion is a huge number um, that we certainly wanna try to decrease, not only for um, the bottom line for our own businesses, but make sure that we are truly taking care of our personal health, as well as everyone that we encounter in the business. <clears throat> and so with that, I certainly wanna make sure that we're able to understand what solutions we can offer to our customers that really promote that total health. Um, a big focus today will be on the sit-stand piece, but it's truly solutions from head to toe. And sometimes if people are just starting out, they may not have a total budget, um, but they can have one or two pieces implemented here or there. So just going through the quick setup of an actual workstation that's there, but then also the other big buzzword when we're talking about ergonomics is musculoskeletal disorders, many times called MSDs. Um, but if you do want to sound really fancy and educated, you can say musculoskeletal disorders. And those are just the injuries um, or the pain points in our joints, our ligaments, muscles, tendons, structures, um, and our nerves that really support any extremity like our um, wrist, forearm, shoulders, neck, and our back. So if we look at this picture here, it's a very simplistic image, but basically we can narrow it down to four points of contact to be aware of and then looking at solutions that can be implemented from them. So starting with the neck, ideally we wanna make sure that our neck is nice and aligned with our computer screen and that we're able to look at it at a nice eye level viewing point. So some solutions that could go in conjunction to keep that proper alignment would be a monitor riser or a laptop riser or even both if they're using more than one screen. Um, or we'll go into one of my favorite products, the One Touch Monitor Arm of how easy those are to use. And then another really great new product that came out that some people may think is dated, but it's absolutely not, um, is the multifunction copy holder. And what that does is that some people think since we're going up to all of these e-documents and there's no need for paper copies, that paper doesn't exist in an office. But what if that one same piece of equipment actually changed into a whiteboard, into a book stand? It was magnetic, it holds your tablet, and you can actually move that around in a well-designed space, but also give yourself the ergonomic benefit of having that copy holder there for the time that does come up that you do need to clip something and have it in your viewing angle versus craning your neck over the desktop. Then moving on to the second point with your low back, you wanna make sure that you're able to properly support yourself in the chair that you're sitting in. A lot of times companies don't have the budget for a new chair. And in the past webinars, we talked about the importance of those extra supports like a lumbar support or a seat cushion with what uh, is called the coccyx cutout. Um, you can re-listen to those webinars if you want more information on those specifically. But having yourself properly supported means that you're going to feel the best by the end of the day because you saw the numbers that we are sitting for so long every day. Moving on to the wrist. Uh, making sure that you do have your wrist nice and aligned uh, meeting the desktop. You want to make sure that you either have a keyboard tray or that your desk is at the appropriate level. And that just means that you're going to have a nice straight bridge from your elbow to the actual desktop and having a keyboard and mouse that fit you correctly. But then also supporting those wrists with using a wrist rest um, for your keyboard and your mouse really ensures that wrist health is there and also promoting the circulation to keep flowing through your whole body. And then the last point of contact would be for your feet, making sure that your feet are properly supported and making sure that they're able to either sit on a footrest or flat on the ground. But a footrest is a really great opportunity, even if you're tall enough to reach the ground to add circulation or movement into your day. A lot of the footrests that are out there, um, including multiple models from Kensington, do have the rocking ability as well as height adjustable and they have smart fit built into them as well. Um, and so being able to have those pieces of equipment that are so affordable, and it's a really great starting point if someone's not ready to dive into the height adjustability aspect, um, to really start with those small desktop accessories attaching to those sales that you might already have, or it's an entry point for those new customers as well. And so looking at this, this is my favorite product from Kensington. I personally love it, but this is the One Touch Monitor Arm. It comes in a single and a dual. Um, and basically what that means is that it is truly available to move with one touch. 
it equals the easiest adjustability as well as the smart fit being built into it. And this is a really great solution for every type of vertical you can imagine. I personally use it at my home office, but it's a great solution for hot desking, um, for a normal traditional office that has a really sleek design. But then also one of my favorite applications um, is actually when I go into a bank and I see those people that are looking at multiple screens all day long or any type of finance job, um, that they have that ability to move those monitors in the direction that they need to, or if they have some sort of customer service role, they're actually able to move those to show the customer what's on the screen with ease and then able to move them back. So it really adds a lot of adjustability and mobility um, to the workplace. And you pair those with the easy solutions of locking and docking, um, and then a nice keyboard and mouse as well. And it's a really great way to affordably attach all of those solutions in a variety of verticals. And I know that um, you guys are probably wondering how much of a market is there out there for a standing desk market? And that certainly has been a buzzword that's out there. Um, and BIFMA reports, which if you're not familiar with BIFMA, BIFMA is the furniture standard. So anything that is approved to be a good piece of furniture follows the BIFMA standard. And that is something popular if you're going out to your customers um, that they may say, um, their facilities designers would say, is it BIFMA approved? Um, and so all of our products would be within that BIFMA standard. Um, but the current TAM for the standing desk market is at $1.1 billion. But if you look at that growth, it is $2.8 billion by 2025. That is a huge, huge growth opportunity. And so in the past, very few companies were willingly providing height adjustable tables um, or desk on desk solutions or the monitor arm solutions. Now this is a great way that if a company already has the um, full desk set up or a desk on desk solution, you still have the opportunity to put in a monitor arm or some of those other desktop accessories to really incorporate that full body movement. But there's huge growth opportunities um, as we see this forecast is huge till 2025 there to really look at some of the solutions that we can put in in an affordable way uh, for those companies that are starting to look at those height adjustable options. So I know one of the popular questions and one of the pieces of pushback that you might get from a customer when you're going to talk to them about this um, type of investment is it's too expensive for me. I can't afford it. Um, and I want to know exactly what ROI I'm going to have. So we did an example on an average worker um, just for the productivity, presenteeism, disengagement, um, a decrease in workers comp. We saw growth in every single one of those areas by having that sit or stand solution. Uh, this model that's pictured is extremely affordable and we did a breakdown into a 12 month period that for an individual user, it would cost that person $41 per month for that sit stand desk. And so literally in less than a year, you would have that unit paid off just in the ROI from that employee's improvement. Um, and so there's certainly things that you look at uh, when you're putting them into the office space of what can I get actual numbers back on ROI. Businesses can track that for themselves, but if you can show how cost-effective this type of solution can be to implement it into the workplace, that is a huge opportunity to be able to get the sit-stand type unit um, or maybe one of the monitor arms in there that's really making their work easier for them to complete in a much more efficient um, and happy way for this specific worker. So now that we've talked about the ROI, I wanna go into the specifics of some of the things that we should look for. I want you guys as partners to go into the workplace and understand that you are providing the best solution for them and not just giving them product A, B, or C. Um, so looking at setting the height of your sit-stand desks and some of the features around it, along with some of the questions some of the customers might be asking. Um, you wanna make sure that the top of the monitors um, are able to be located at or just below eye level and then an arm's length away. Uh, with that, you wanna make sure if people are wondering what exactly is arm's length away, I always visualize it as putting your arm straight out like you're putting a stop sign out in front of you. And if you can just barely graze your monitors with their hand there, they're at the appropriate viewing distance from you. So with a sit stand unit, you should be able to do that with wherever the monitors are placed on that. 
Um, also, as far as the height of the unit, um, going with the BIFMA standards, there should always be a really good range of adjustability to make sure that it fits a, a large range of users. There's a lot of them on the market that have a very small range of adjustability, but with Kensington's products, we do have a really large uh, range of adjustability in any of the sit-stand products that we offer. Uh, with the positioning of your arms, you certainly want to make sure that you keep them close to your body and so you're not having to reach forward to get to the keyboard and that you're able to have the keyboard and mouse on the same surface. So having a nice large platform um, to have the keyboard and mouse on is certainly key. And then making sure as far as the depth of the actual desks, a lot of them do clip on to the back of the desk or they're sitting on the actual desktop. Typically you want a desktop surface to be about 24 to 30 inches minimum deep, but once it starts getting much deeper than that, if you do have to clamp something on to the back of the surface, sometimes people aren't able to get it close enough to them. So that's something you certainly want to pay attention to in the workplace uh, when you're looking at those environments. And then looking at the actual height of the unit for the user. So Kensington makes it really easy with SmartFit built into it. I know we've talked about SmartFit in the past, but something to just quickly review is that SmartFit is put into every single product um, that's labeled a SmartFit product. There's a hand that comes in the box on a diagram. The user would then place their hand on the diagram of four different colors of hands, see which one they fit into, and then easily be able to adjust that product to the correct height for them. That is all based on data that came from the Army. Um, and so it's really scientifically proving that there is certainly schematics to pay attention to when you are adjusting those products. Another simple way, if they um, don't have the smart fit guide in front of them or just in general, is to make sure that it's nice and um, level with about your belly button, but from the elbow bend to the desktop, it should be a nice flat bridge or just slightly below. Um, and then with the um, head, neck and torso and your legs, you always wanna make sure that they're straight in front of you and so that you're always turning from your hips versus actually just turning your neck. So making sure that they're able to be nice and aligned and they're not craning one way or the other to get to their work. And so with that, you also wanna make sure about the environment that you're placing these sit-stand desks um, or units into. And so with that, you wanna make sure that um, they know that the mechanism is nice and quiet. And so if you're putting this into a, hide or a hot desking environment, that it's not going to disrupt the people around them by adjusting it up and down all day. Also, you wanna look at the ease of adjustability. If they're too hard to figure out, and like I said, SmartFit is a really great, easy way um, to adjust from sitting to standing, but if they're too hard to figure out, people won't utilize them, and the customer may not be as satisfied. So you wanna make sure that they're aware of how to adjust them, and make sure that you're choosing a product for them that is easy for them to understand, uh, like the Kensington SmartFit products are a great choice there. And so going into a couple of the specific products that we have to offer, I had to include my favorite one, which like I said, we'll get to that last. Um, but with that, the SmartFit sit-stand desk, um, truly any of these could be implemented into any vertical, but the sit-stand desk is great for people that do have a really deep workstation. And so you're not having to clamp anything on. It's super easy that there's no um, installation or anything, it's fully assembled. Um, and it's super heavy duty so that you're able to put a large amount of um, monitors or keyboards. I've seen people put plants and other things on there as well. Um, and this is certainly a durable situation to put into any type of vertical that's out there. Um, the next one is the SmartFit SitStand dual monitor workstation. And with this, my absolute favorite feature about it is that, like I had said earlier, sometimes the standard workstation height of 28 and a half inches to 30 inches, which is that standard, um, is sometimes still too tall for people. So with the SmartFit SitStand sit dual monitor workstation, it has a lower keyboard platform that allows it to go below the actual surface of the desktop. And that gives a huge range of adjustability for people. And so they're able to have a wide variety of shapes and sizes of people all using the same piece of equipment. The other huge piece um, in this second one here is that it's a great option for education that offers a lot of mobility that you're easily able to move that arm back and forth that really allows you to show your screens or move with the screens themselves. And then the last application that I love it for is actually in healthcare. 
A lot of times you don't want to have your stuff on the surfaces in a healthcare situation, especially a laboratory. Um, but if you're able to get the, the equipment off the actual desktop and still have that adjustability to go between sitting and standing, that is a huge seller for healthcare environments today. And it has a nice large platform. You can still put paperwork or other items on that secondary platform that's there, but still get a really great range of adjustability with that lower uh, keyboard platform as well. And then lastly, the SmartFit One Touch Height Adjustable Dual Monitor Arm. It also comes in a single. I love the design. I love the um, light silver aspect of it. The cord cable management is super easy to use. And then having SmartFit built into it as well. Um, and having those gas springs, it is so incredibly easy to adjust them to the appropriate level for you that you can move them around as much as you want. And those are the ideal for those hot desking environments or where people are coming and going all day. Otherwise, it's also great just to have that updated look and feel that when you're going into some of these modern offices, it's a really great option to just update that space at a really affordable price point that you'll find is extremely competitive to other people that are on the market today. You can also add the one touch uh, monitor arm to the sit stand desk. And that's really the ideal as well, that not only do you have the adjustability in the sit to stand feature, but then you can also have that adjustability for the monitor arm as well. So we've made it to the end. So just looking back at what we've covered today, I really want to focus on the fact that every single worker benefits from these solutions. No one is exempt from it. It's truly becoming a normal part of every person's life. Employees, all of us as partners and the employers themselves, um, there's absolutely a need for that full body movement during the workday because it is vital not only to our work, but to our personal life health as well. You guys saw the statistics. The global wellness industry is growing, and even more so that workplace wellness market, which is why we're here today. From 2015 to 17, the wellness economy grew a whopping 6.4% annually, nearly twice as fast as our global economic growth. That is huge to think about and a huge opportunity to present to your customers. And then lastly, it absolutely pays to accessorize. Aim to connect four solutions from head to toe to get that full body fit of ergonomics and attaching those solutions not only increases your margin, but it also shows that you're a valued partner and making sure that you care about your customers. All right, well, thank you guys for attending our last series on how to master workplace wellness like an ergonomist. We hope you guys found it helpful and you guys found a few things you can take away.